it's probably going to be Belgrade or Barcelona, let's be honest. Hello there, I'm Emmett Ryan from Ball in Europe. Thank you all for joining me in this video where we're going to discuss where EuroLeague should hold the upcoming Final Four uh, in May coming and uh, talk through why certain places aren't really going to be in the discussion, uh, places we'd like to see in the discussion and the places that most people assume are in the discussion which as I said in the uh, cold open it's probably Belgrade or Barcelona but we'll discuss others and also before we get to that uh, two things I want to bring up one is please subscribe uh, it's been great uh, bringing this content to you we have videos every Monday Wednesday Friday and we're going to keep doing that all season long although we may change the three days once the season gets underway but for the time being we're, we're Monday Wednesday Friday and the other thing is a big shout out to Run It Back Philly and bring in all your sickos to the channel for the Abuselli video. Really appreciate it. I'm going to link to Run It Back Philly uh, in the description below. Please follow follow uh, DJ Eastwood there. Really, really appreciate it. Much love to you. So now we get to the obvious bit, which is where's not going to host the final four? So we're going to, to go through a few examples of places that aren't going to host it. So for recency, there's the likes of Berlin, because it hosted it last year. For hotel room size, you've got your Basconia and your uh, Zalgiris, both of which have hosted it in recent times, like in Vittorio Gestez and in Kaunas. But the hotel room issue became an issue. And then you've got the arena size issue, where Virtus, their larger arena, still is, it's, it's, a, it's about the 10, 11k mark, depending on how you judge it. So that's them gone. Uh, so Bologna, we can't realistically see hosting it. Same goes for Munich and also, of course, the Germany factor. There's a few other cities in there as well, but that's the key thing. These ones you can just knock off straight away. They're not going to be in it as the key ones. So let's look at the, the, the ones which I reckon belong in the conversation that don't seem to be right now. Well, the first one that jumps out is Paris. It's got a couple of things going for it. Obviously, the arena Paris uh, basketball play-in is not going to be in the discussion. Uh, the Adidas Arena is only like a 5K arena, far too small. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just not going to be in the discussion. We can rule that out. But what we can rule in is uh, the small... Oh, sorry, they've disappeared from my list. How about that? But we can rule in, though, a Paris basketball. Sorry for that little distraction, because uh, I'm using the phone here a little bit for notes. It is they have the Bercy Arena available. And obviously, Paris, it's a strong transport network. Some would say if you're straight in one, I especially say that to uh, Mes Amis en France, or anyone who's ever worked in France, uh, because they know, or in Paris, because they know that's a big issue for a lot of people. So. But like obviously they're you know only the, this is the only year they're guaranteed Euroleague status, and for them like hosting wouldn't be a bad thing at all. Worth having them in the conversation for this year if nothing else, basically. Then the other one I'd like to see in it uh, really would be Madrid. Uh, the reason uh, actually one of the other two I'd like to see in it is Madrid. The reason really with Madrid is that we are hearing Spanish talks. Obviously Madrid's hosted it more recently than Barcelona. But it's a great arena. It's just fab. Very accessible. Uh, Madrid's obviously well served by flights. And it's one of those places where Euroleague should consider going back to as often as possible uh, for the Final Four, purely because the whole setup is just perfect. Like, the only question really is getting a beer after the final game, because Sunday nights, uh, you know, anywhere really in Europe aren't the easiest nights to get a beer. Uh, so that's them. Other one I want to put in is Milan, because you have to go back to 2024 when they last hosted it. The arena has improved in terms of sort of, you know, the overall facility since then. And I mean that in terms of one major thing, which is the uh, heat. It's not as uh, insufferably warm there as it used to be. Like, there is actual, you know, better air conditioning and stuff there now. And again, fantastically accessible on the train. The city's great for hotel rooms. It's just got a lot going for it. Uh, the ones I'm going to have to sort of, you know rule out more because of my gut than anything because it's an obvious one that jumps out is Istanbul and the entire reason I'm ruling out Istanbul is nothing personal I love the city I love going to games there it's been seven years since I went to a game in Istanbul I'm gagging to get back for big ball games in Istanbul so Turkish friends no issue there at all the question I really have is if Istanbul is going to be hosting the Final Four in May, I feel we'd have heard 
rumours about it by now. Definitely early to go back there as soon as possible, but if Istanbul was going to be in the discussion, it would already have been in the discussion. Uh, some people are going to say Athens as well, a great city, again, love visiting it. Uh, only been there once, but it was great, uh, you know, and visiting the Acropolis was amazing, and to see Pau and uh, Olympiakos on consecutive nights was also a fantastic experience for me. And of course I got to see the Nicolathus triple-double, so I have a lot of love for the Oaka. Uh, the SEF just wouldn't have the size capabilities. But the issue is not the size of the OACA. Size is not a problem for the OACA. I think we can all agree with that. And accessibility, again, not really an issue because of where it's based. Uh, the issue with the OACA, essentially, is that it's not uh, contemporary enough. And by that, I really mean, uh, you know, that your, your, your fancy corporate seating. The stuff that people with the big money pay for, that's not there and that's going to be an issue uh, short term. I think, uh, and also... EuroLeague expects there to be some sort of, you know, reimbursement for it for going to a city. I think Athens can stay in the list, but, um, you know, I think it's not going to be in the discussion this year. Similar reasons to Istanbul and that if it was going to be in the discussion, it would be by now. I hope that makes sense. So let's get to what you really want, which is me to discuss the two cities that are in the discussion. It's pretty simple. Everybody's here in two names and they both begin with B, Barcelona and Belgrade. Now Barcelona has Belgrade beat on accessibility, on public transport I would argue, um, you know, although we will get back to that because there is one major transport issue, uh, and on hotel rooms. Here's the thing, it's not going to be to a point where any of those are a problem for Belgrade. Belgrade it's not as big for hotel rooms as Barcelona, but it's far better suited than Vittoria Gestez was or Conus was. There is more than enough uh, sp space for people who will be going to the Final Four to get there. Air travel, again, it's not a decisive thing because when you look at the cities where fans from teams of those likely to make the Final Four are, and more importantly of those who would bring a fan base with them, are Athens is well served, Istanbul well served, Barcelona, Madrid both well served. Key EuroLeague cities are actually well served from Nikola Tesla Airport in Belgrade. So again, not an issue. And that's before you ignore, you know, the obvious thing that we might even have a Belgrade team in it. But that's for another video. And uh, so, you know, you have a lot of upside there for Belgrade. So while Barcelona does have it beaten in that, it's not like it's a, well, Belgrade can't win overall way. And then you go to the accessibility. Now, both arenas, uh, you know, are walking distance from major city center points like I typically walked uh, to the arena in Belgrade when the final four was last there and it was great I, I was uh, you know it was a good, probably good for my step count to be honest because let's face it Mammy Ryan raised a big boy uh, you know BIE is not the smallest man going but we're gonna work on that too don't worry but also when you're actually at the last point a vehicle will drop you off typically which sounds like an odd thing to bring up for an arena you're basically outside the arena in Belgrade, uh, you know, the uh, and, and I, you know, that's just brilliant. Uh, like, you can just get almost to the door in a taxi or a bus. So, huge upside there. Barcelona, it will be the Palau San Jordi, where, with a couple of small exceptions for, like, limited access, most people are going to be walking close to two kilometers from when they last get off public transport. Now, for crowd dispersal, that's actually really good. Uh, you know, there, but for accessibility, that is an issue. And then we get to the, you know, arena quality, because I hear uh, Partizan and Zvezda fans tell me that their roof is high and the noise doesn't carry that well. I've been in both arenas a couple of times, folks. Whatever you think about noise not carrying in Belgrade, it's nothing compared to the Palau San Jordi, where, frankly, you could have the most rabid of rabid fan bases, and it wouldn't feel that big. Like, the roof, the way the ceiling works in Palau San Jordi, it is detracting from atmosphere. It, like, sucks energy out. Uh, it's like almost the reverse of the basketball arena we have here in Dublin, which I know some of you see my videos and you can see my fighting to try and get away from the sheer volume of noise from, let's face it, a place that takes less than 2,000 people, but it's, it carries noise so well that it's one of the loudest arenas in Europe. Like, you know, I'm not saying one of the most aggressive before anybody gets at me. I mean, in terms of pure volume of noise, of how actually loud it gets. Like, it's up there. Uh, and that's design. Uh, that's, you know the case of it like if you put a partisan game in there one you'd have obviously about eight thousand people wondering why they couldn't get in if not more uh then two you'd have a bunch of them wondering why we're we playing a game in dublin anyway and three the the two thousand uh, ish partisan fans you get in there would be insane same goes for a few other clubs by the way i'm going to throw in pows vesda Oli fans as well if any of you have a big game in there 
you're going to destroy that place. And I don't mean that in terms of anything you do physically. You're all going to be well behaved, I'm sure. I mean, just your voices alone will destroy that place. So yeah, the arena, I am comfortably, and also it has more seats as well, I am comfortably giving that win to Belgrade. And this isn't a case of, let's count the factors up and see who wins by more. I just go, listen, Barcelona's on the list to get one. Sure, great. I'd much rather they hold off and go into Barcelona until that arena because uh, obviously they're building a new Palau as a plan, until that's there and that's in the conversation, I think it would be a better choice. I think it would certainly uh, have a more real feel to it than the Palau San Jordi. And, uh, yeah, I just I just prefer it. Uh, like, Belgrade as well, let's be honest, it's cheaper. Uh, you know, like, uh, the, of, the, of all the people who should be rooting for Barcelona, by the way, it's me. Getting to Barcelona is very affordable for me and very easy. For me to get to Belgrade involves a couple of hops, well, one hop at least. And, uh, you know, so I'm start, I'm already down money before I get to Belgrade, but fortunately I make it back up by being cheaper once I get there. And it's just lovely. Like, both cities are lovely. I'm not going to criticise either city. They're both lovely cities. And for a sports fan to visit, like, you know, it's, it's just great. Like, all sports, by the way, not just basketball. And, you know, there's a basketball side showing the love to the hoops. But, uh, yeah, now I just think, you know, this is a place I want to go to watch sports, uh, which is fantastic. And so, yeah, I, I'm leaning. But I, if I've got to choose between one of them this year, I go, the Belgrade Arena is the best it's going to be for the foreseeable future and that's great because it's a fantastic arena both are great cities both served well enough by transport both served well enough by hotels even though obviously Barcelona has wins in that and you know they both have you know a lot of upside in terms of culture and all that as well I'm just still leaning towards Belgrade I think if I had to pick which one to go to it's definitely there. I, you know, we'll definitely obviously also have great home fan turnout. I think we'll see a lot of uh, black and red coloured uh, fans on the streets beforehand uh, because, you know, they're going to, you know, Belgrade people, they love good basketball. They're going to go to the games, even if they are going to be crazy prices. Uh, wow, yeah, the tickets, never exactly the nicest prices for the fans, are they? But that's the way a business goes, I guess. But yeah, so I'm saying Belgrade, that's my pick. Uh, I think it's still up in the air as to who your league will pick. I genuinely think it's a 50-50 call right now. But if I was to pick one of the two, I'd go Belgrade. And like I said, ones I want to see in the conversation are Paris, Istanbul, Athens, and Milan and Madrid. Those five. Valencia will get in the conversation once Serena is built, but that won't be for this year. So we can add them to the conversation for next year's video doing this if EuroLeague haven't gotten around to selecting it by now. And actually, just before I go, because I'm sure some of our viewers are kind of going, and I probably should have said this earlier, wait, you're telling me that they haven't picked where the Final Four is yet? Yeah, so for our visitors from afar, uh, basically the Final Four is typically picked before the season, but not always. There's a little bit of flexibility, and it is a guaranteed uh, venue you know, that will host it is and it doesn't have to have one of the four competitive teams in the, in the competition. So obviously it's great for getting traveling support in and all that. And uh, yeah, like it's, I think it's one of the great traditions we have in EuroLeague. I prefer it to waiting to see who the four finalists are and, um, you know, picking one of them. Like your BCL has done it. Uh, they switched away from it last year. I hope the BCL switches uh, away from it long term, but goes with a bit more of a thinking plan behind it as to why they're going to do it and where they're going to put it. But uh, we'll see with that, basically. Like obviously Belgrade was probably too big an arena for them last year, uh, g given the teams that were involved. But, you know, it would be nice to see. And I just like that it's one of EuroLeague's traditions. But, yeah, that's been great. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, ring that bell, and I will see you next time.